everyone, and uh, welcome to another session of Now We Talk International Series. Uh, today's topic is market domination, and our guest speaker will be David Winford, who's been with us in the past. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Angelo, our VP of Sales and Marketing, to introduce our guest speaker today. Hey, thanks, Bill. Um, and thanks for everyone for joining us today um, out here for another session as we try to expand some of that uh, um, take, take advantage of the time that we are sitting at homes right now as hopefully some of the areas are starting to loosen up, but hopefully through this process, we can get to gather some ideas and, you know, just kind of stay, you know, training is a very funny word, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean we have to get in the water to do some training. We can do all types of different training. And, you know, I think we've been pretty diligent here the last couple of weeks, you know, doing topics that can help our business to stay relevant and move forward in some, you know, progressive ways. Um, David Winford has agreed to join us today, backed by popular demand. Demand. I know he did uh, several weeks back, maybe a couple months back. It was the uh, how to win the profit game, which was uh, a great piece of information. So um, now we're bringing him out here <coughs> to uh, talk a little bit about marketing. And um, the cool thing about this program that we want to show is that you know you just can't go out there and take an ad in the newspaper and say, "Hey, I've done my marketing." So we're hoping that we can, you know, with this, that there's some type of a formula that you can follow. It's a very basic and simple formula that you can, um, I've used it when I own my business. Um, so I know that we can go ahead and, you know, utilize it and get instant results, um, which will, you know, make a deep impact. Uh, so, you know, that makes it super easy to use. And it's not anything high tech, highfalutin. It's just, you know, it's just a matter of, implementing a couple uh, hot buttons and making sure you're dotting your I's, crossing your T's and you'll probably see results. Um, but with that, I just want to bring in David and um, I'm going to share my screen because uh, he's going to have a little PowerPoint presentation here and I'll share my screen with everyone. But uh, most importantly, uh, to bring in David and to kind of just kind of go over this with us and see what uh, what we're missing and hopefully there's some things that we can take from here in this in this in this topic so with that hey dave what are you doing man you hanging out yes i'm hanging out thanks so much for the introduction i appreciate it hello uh, everyone it's good to be back with all of you um in our last talk i shared with you some cutting edge information that i hope you've implemented in your business you know we talked about the two hot buttons most small business owners ask about more customers and more revenue I answered the question about more revenue and dove deep into the profit formula that would help you uh, double your profits. Today, I'm going to answer the question about generating more customers and helping you to dominate your market. So how would you like it if I could cut through all the hype, eliminate the BS, and give you guys a proven step-by-step -step roadmap for making your phone ring, driving prospects to your website, and marketing your business successfully? I'm going to reveal to you the three biggest lead generation mistakes small business owners make, and I'm going to show you how you can overcome them all resulting in marketing domination. Here are the three mistakes. Small business, uh, mistake number one for a small business owner is that they fail to get professional help. Number two is they don't know the fundamentals required to successfully market their business and attract as many new clients as the business can handle. And number three, they have no idea how to use the marketing to generate immediate cash flow. Now let's explore these three in depth and show you how you can easily and systematically overcome them all. Mistake number one, Small business owners fail to get professional help. Now, can you name me just one professional athlete who does not have a coach? There aren't any. In fact, Tiger Woods actually has a total of nine coaches guiding him from everything from his golf game to his financial investments. But do small businesses like you really need professional help? Now, some of you may think you're the next Don Draper or Peggy Olson of Mad Men and have spent the Super Bowl weekend judging or rating the ads and commercials and believing that you could do it better than those guys. Yet those ads are created by professionals. Unfortunately, those professionals have no clue what they're doing. Everything they're doing in marketing and advertising today is wrong. Now, I don't want you to take my word for that, but let me prove it to you right now. If you currently use any form of marketing, such as print ad, brochure, postcard, uh, or for that matter, uh, your company website, I'd like for you to take it out and look at it carefully. Let me provide you with the little known secrets that will help you to produce more leads than your business can handle. It's been in my experience that 99% of all professionals don't know the lead generation secrets I'm about to reveal to you. In fact, this information is so powerful and compelling, it will position you 
in the top 1% of all lead generation professionals today. Here's what true marketing professionals will know and help you to implement in your marketing. It's known as the marketing equation. Our marketing equation will let you quit competing on price and let you start selling your product or service for what, it, for what it's really worth. You'll drive in more leads and increase your advertising response by 10 to more than 100 times. You'll convert a higher percentage of those leads and dramatically increase your number of leads. Additionally, you'll get a bigger bang for your marketing buck. But the bottom line is this, you'll literally create a profit faucet that you'll have total control over. So first, you must, uh, must understand what marketing is supposed to do. Your marketing's number one job is to facilitate the decision-making process of your prospect. Marketing, the, marketing that accomplishes facilitating the decision-making process will result in your prospects and customers coming to one single conclusion, that they would have to be certifiably crazy to do business with anyone else but you, regardless of the price. The sad part of that statement is most small businesses don't know anything about what I just shared with you. They have no clue to what marketing is supposed to do. But there's also an additional problem to consider. Most small business owners use a tactical marketing approach instead of a strategic marketing approach. Now, please let me explain that here for a moment. Running an ad in your local newspaper and sending out an email or a direct mail letter or even ad, uh, you know, uh, airing a radio or TV ad on, your media, on a local media station, those are all examples of tactical marketing. Now, don't get me wrong, the newspaper and the radio and direct mail can be successful marketing channels if, it's a big if, if your marketing message is powerful and compelling. But that's the problem. The message is the strategic side of marketing, and yet it's the most neglected. This distinction between strategic and tactical marketing is huge, and one you need to be acutely aware of anytime you start to talk about generating more leads. Many companies mistakenly assume that when you talk about lead generation, you're automatically talking about tactical lead generation. Things like placing, ad, placing ads, sending out mailers, you know, joining a net, you know, networking group, um, and so on. They fail to realize that the strategic side of the coin, what you say in your marketing and how you say it, is almost always more important than the marketing medium uh, you say it in. If you fail to make this distinction, then you risk becoming jaded towards certain forms of marketing and advertising that should be a part of your tactical plan. But you eliminate them for consideration because they haven't worked for you in the past. When lead generation results are less than optimal, small business owners tend to almost always blame the marketing medium, like the newspaper the ad ran in or the postcard they sent out. They blame the tactical part of the plan without any regard of how good or how bad the strategic messaging in the marketing piece was. You know, I often hear business leaders say things like, we tried radio and it doesn't work for our kind of business. Or I, I've heard, we sent out 50,000 50, pieces of direct mail and only generated three orders. It just doesn't work for my business, Dave. Please, just don't, you know, just because it didn't work, don't assume that it won't work. Most people don't have the evaluation skills or the know-how to judge whether poor marketing results from poor strategy or poor tactical execution. This is where our step-by-step -step roadmap can generate more leads than your business can handle. For example, most small business owners rely heavily on platitudes in their marketing. They say things like, we have the lowest prices, the best services, um, you know, the best value, not to mention that we've been in business since you know, 1431 BC. Look at your own marketing that I asked you to get out earlier. How many platitudes did you use in your own marketing? Now, by the way, this is not your fault. Small business owners have been conditioned to think this is the proper way to market their business since most advertising, uh, advertisers follow the same pathetic marketing formula, including the Fortune 500 types. Keep in mind, as business owners and as human beings, more importantly, as human beings, we're all just after one thing when we, when we buy something, the best deal. We all want the best deal. Unfortunately, when we use platitudes in our marketing, there's absolutely no way to tell who is actually offering the best deal. Everyone says they have the lowest prices, the highest quality, and the best rates. So who do you believe? Well, there's only one way to know, 
And that's to research every single business that offers what you want to buy. Now, come on, really? How many of us you know, are going to take the time or have the patience to do that? So most of us just automatically assume that everyone is pretty much the same. And therefore, we default to call on the, you know, call on the business that offers us the lowest prices. But think about this. When you can't communicate the true value your business offers, you're doomed to forever compete on price. Our marketing equation will change all of that for you forever. And it's going to be the backbone of your strategic marketing plan. Now, let me give you a quick uh, overview and then spend some time going through it with, uh, going through it, uh, with you in great detail. Our marketing equation has four components. First, we must interrupt your prospects. We must get your qualified prospects to pay attention to your lead generation marketing. Simple enough to say, but a lot more difficult to pull off in real life unless you understand what you're about to learn here. The interrupt is done through your headline if your marketing is in print, or it's the first thing you say in your marketing if it's through radio or TV. The second component is engage. Once your prospect is interrupted, it's critical we give your reader the promise that information is forthcoming that will help the prospect make the best decision, or better yet, the best buying decision possible. In other words, it must help facilitate their decision to pick you over anyone else. This is the job of your subheadline. The interrupt is our headline that highlights the specific problem that your prospects are looking for a solution to. And the engage is your subheadline that promises them that you offer a solution to that problem we mentioned in our headline. Now, the third component we need to include is educate. Once you've educated, or pardon me, once you've interrupted and engaged your prospect, we have to give them information that allows them to logically understand how and why you solve the problem they're facing. Now, this is accomplished by giving detailed, quantifiable, specific, and revealing information. This is typically done in the body copy of your ad. When you educate, we need to reveal to your prospects the important and relevant information they need to know when you're making it, when making a good decision and that your business and yours alone provides it to them. The interrupt and engage hit the prospect's emotional hot buttons. Educate is the logic they need to justify picking up the phone and calling you. The fourth and final component of your marketing equation is your offer. <clears throat> now, now that we've interrupted your prospects based on problems that are important to them, engaged by um, a promise of the solution, and they have examined the education information that makes your solution real and believable, the last step we need to take is to give them a low risk way to take the next step in your sales process. You do this by offering a free marketing tool such as a report or a brochure, a video, or something that will continue to educate them along the way. Your offer will uh, allow your prospects to feel in control of their final decision to call and buy from you. So our marketing equation of interrupt, engage, educate, and offer, and together they equal market domination. Now here's the problem. Most marketing today only can, contains two of these components. They interrupt by throwing something at you that's either familiar like say Tiger Woods, or unusual like a singing monkey or talking pets. Then once they grab your attention, they make you some type of offer such as call now for whatever. They've left out the engage and the educate and marketing seldom succeeds when this happens. You have to have all of those parts together. In fact, the only time this type of marketing does succeed is when you can offer the, to run that ad over and over nonstop for an extended period of time. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Melts in your mouth, not in your hand. And things have been going uh, with Coke. Things have been going better with Coke. Literally have been rammed down our throats by Fortune 500 companies forever. But after hearing these slogans thousands of times, of course, we're going to remember them. So, but how can, your, how can a small business owner like you that doesn't have a billion dollar marketing budget successfully market your business? The answer, you can't. Unless, unless you follow our entire marketing equation. Now, here's an example to prove this to you. Years ago, there was a moving company that I worked with 
that was on the verge of bankruptcy. They were paying $3,000 a month for a full page print in the local paper. They were averaging just 70 calls per month and their conversion ratio was only 16%. So out of the 70 calls every month, they were only getting seven moving jobs. No wonder why they were starving, right? Bankruptcy is right around the corner. The reason their ad wasn't working was their failure to follow our marketing equation. In fact, the only marketing equation component they had in their ad was an offer, and that offer was call us. And then they listed their phone number. They had no interrupt at the top of their ad whatsoever, just the name of their company. Then they listed all the generic and need to services that every one of their competitors, competitors also listed in their ads. You guys know things like long, you know, local and long distance, residential and commercial, fully licensed and insured, um, national, regional, and so on. Then at the bottom of the ad was their phone number. Again, look at your own marketing that I asked you about earlier. Does your marketing format sound exactly the same as the one this moving company was using? Did you place the name of your business at the top? List your products and services in the middle, along with all the layers of worthless and meaningless platitudes, such as you know, lowest prices and the highest quality and best rates. The simple truth is this, 99% of all small businesses follow this exact format. And then they wonder why they aren't generating enough quality leads. If you want your phone to start ringing, then you must follow our marketing equation of interrupt, engage, educate, and offer. So using our equation, this company, this moving company redesigned this lead generation and here's what happened. First, they identified the biggest problem their customers had when moving. Without a hesitation, it was damage. Now here, check this out. Did you guys know that 72% of all moves re result in something being damaged? 72%. That's the area they needed to focus on then and create what we call a marketing dominating position around a hot button issue of damage. But why is damage such an important issue since all moving companies advertise they're fully insured? It turns out that all movers must be fully insured. Yet the general public has no idea what fully insured really means. Now, when you hear someone say that you're fully insured or that they're fully insured, don't you automatically assume that means that if they break your $5,000 TV, they'll reimburse you $5,000? I certainly did. Well, it turns out that in the moving industry, that isn't what fully insured means at all. Legally, a moving company can claim they fully insure their customers' belongings based on a per pound of damage. Now, the national average is 40 cents per pound. So, in other words, if the mover destroys your $5,000 100-pound TV, they're only legally obligated to pay you $40. Unfortunately, the poor, unsuspecting customers that, you know, that doesn't that they don't find that out until after the damage has taken place and they've received their ministerial reimbursement. But for this specific moving company, this policy was never an issue because they didn't believe in this deceptive industry practice. They actually provide their customers with what's known as full replacement value insurance. So if they break your $5,000 TV, you're reimbursed $5,000. No questions asked. But there's a big question. How could they afford this much more expensive insurance? It was due to their extraordinary five-step packing process that only their company offered. And thanks to this process, their actual breakage and damage totals were below 3%. And with little damage, and what little damage they did uh, occur to uh, involve a broken plate or, uh, or a dish, relatively minor items that you know, had little to no replacement cost. And certainly no sentimental value that would create you know, some emotional situation with their customers. So their unique packing process allowed them to carry a $5,000 insurance deductible. And their premiums for the superior insurance were actually lower than their competitors paid for, the, for their inferior deceptive insurance. Their five-step packing process, coupled with their superior full uh, replacement value insurance coverage, became their marketing dominating position. Now, all that's left is positioning that information in their ads 
and following our marketing equation. So let's first create a headline for the, for the top of their ad that interrupts. Now this must address the main hot button issue or problem that their, their prospects are, are, are looking to solve. In this case, it was damaged. So the headline should say something like this. Last year, more than 4,000 damaged and negligent lawsuits were filed against moving companies by outraged homeowners. Now, do you guys think the headline would grab the attention of prospective movers? You bet your bottom dollar it will. But let's not stop there. Next, let's engage the prospect by, by promising them the solution to the problem we referenced in the headline. In this case, damage prevention. So what do you think about this subheadline? Ask any mover these two questions to ensure you won't be victimized or ripped off by deceptive industry practices. Now, when a prospect reads this subheadline, do you think they'll want to uh, immediately find out what those two questions are? Of course they will. Now let's educate them by providing them with two questions that the prospects can ask any mover they choose to contact. What about these two questions? Do you follow a minimum five-step packing process for every item you place in your truck? And second, do you carefully or do you carry a full replacement value insurance? The funny thing is we already know that the uh, competition's answer to both of these questions is no. Since this mover has already previously sur surveyed them um, along the way. This ad educates prospects on the realities of what actually takes place in the moving industry and highlights this moving company's marketing dominating position that makes them the obvious choice to do business with. Mm -hmm. Now, their offer was a free moving company comparison checklist that highlights the service that they did with all those, uh, with their comp against their competition. So showing the prospect that they, that they were the only moving company in town that offered all of the desired benefits. This will make them the no-brainer choice in the moving industry. And the results they generate from this new ad sealed the deal. So instead of averaging just 70 calls per month, their new ad averaged 955 calls per month. Instead of a 16% conversion rate, their rate jumped to 68%. Their new ad generated so many new clients asking for their services. They had to partner with four of their competitors to handle the increased volume. And here's the best part from my, from my perspective. Those four competitors bought this company out nine months later for $2.3 million. All of this from simply changing the strategic messaging in their ad and without spending any additional money on marketing. This is why every small business needs to seek out our professional help. But finding professional help is often frustrating and at times a crapshoot. That's why I wanted to teach you today our marketing formula, our marketing equation of interrupt, engage, and offer. The moving company trained their prospects on the relevant and important issues they needed to know when moving. So those prospects knew what to ask uh, for when they sought out the services of a mover. Now you know our marketing equation and can, and, and can use it when you're seeking out professional help for yourself. A true professional will know this equation, and if they don't, haul ass, get away as fast as you possibly can. And by the way, did you notice that the information we just discussed, we also covertly covered mistakes number two and number three? Earlier, I said the second, the second biggest mistake small business owners make involve the fact that they don't know the fundamentals required to successfully market their business and attract as many new clients as their business can handle. Well, you now do know the fundamentals. You can use them to outmarket, outsell your competition. Keep in mind, first you have to create a marketing dominant position for your business, and then you have to insert that position into your marketing by following our marketing equation, interrupt, engage, educate, and offer. And the third biggest mistake small business owners make focus on the fact that they have no idea how to use the marketing to generate immediate cash flow. I guarantee you, when you follow our marketing equation in every form of your marketing you do, from your business cards to your company website, 
the financial results are instantaneous and immediate. You now have a system of interrupt, engage, educate, and offer your market. You can now do that for your market. So I challenge you to go out and dominate your market. And as Spock says, live long and prosper. I mean, because you and I have, we've always had these conversations and we always go back and forth. And I think a prime example that we always talk about when we talk about the interrupt, the engage, the educate and the offer, you see a lot of that on like LinkedIn, you know, mm -hmm. like you'll see like, you know, for like people will list their, 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 their pictures out there, you know, they'll put their profiles out there and then they'll have like their job title rather than doing, because remember, you know, they're not doing something that's interesting or engaging or interrupting that they're that they're in their LinkedIn profile. Same mm -hmm. with their businesses, you know, uh, like, like, it's a great point that you put out there that, you know, when you do a, um, you, everybody puts out, you know, the same thing, we're the oldest, we're the largest, we're the biggest, yeah. you know, that's real interesting how that always pans out. I think it, you know, and I, Bill, you can correct me on this. It's so funny how all these conversations that we are always having Okay, they always circle back to why now we and we always go back to that initial PowerPoint presentation that we always made and it talks about creating that niche. Now he gives you that ability to create that niche market. Now he gives you that ability to make your instructor specified specialty different than the store down the road. And that's what David is saying is by that particular moving company, they used a five pack processing, a, fa a five uh five-part yeah. packaging process that nobody else was using. So I mm -hmm. think that's the interesting thing is that every single store is doing something unique. They just don't know they're doing it unique. And they have to well, discover that. Yeah, I think they know what they're doing unique. The, the, the big issue com becomes, there's this, there's this thing called um, the inside reality and the outside perception, right? So inside, you know you're doing certain things that are just incredible. Right. So when you go to look at somebody else's ad or you go look at your competition's ad, they're saying the same damn thing you're saying. Right. Because they probably stole it from you or you stole it from them. Right. But there's the inside reality that's going on. That you know, you're doing something different than everybody else is. But the outside perception. Right. They don't connect. And so it's our job as marketers or our job as business owners to connect those two. You got to connect the inside reality with the outside perception. And when you do that, you make a lot of money. You distinguish yourself from everybody else. Right. right? But you've got to think strategically about that. Yeah. And that's what I was hoping you guys gain out of that is that really, you know, it can't be all about tactical. You know, it's easy to put in a, you know, run a, you know, run a print ad or run at a radio or do all those kinds of things. But, you know, how, you know, what's the strategic messaging? What are the hot buttons that your, your customers or your prospective customers are dealing with? That make it, you guys with me, right? I just no, no, man, it's you. perfect sense, man. Go ahead, Bill. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's 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 awesome sense. I mean, it's easier said than done. I just think that, but that, I, and it, but it also reflects back that you know, our exposure to marketing, you know, the the small business guy's exposure to marketing is always through the television, through yep. the big ads, through the Super Bowl. You know, so you're mm -hmm. seeing the plop plop fizz fizz. So everybody thinks that's their brand of marketing when we have to dial it back a little bit, it kind of work, works strategically for us. And yeah. it goes back to the niche, man. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah well, you got to find that marketing dominating position, but you got to think about it. You got to think about, okay. And so you have to engage with your, you have to engage with your own customers and you have to engage with your prospective customers. Right. So, you know, that, you know, uh, you know, successful businesses, you know, know that there's a problem. Right. And then they have a solution to the problem. Yeah. Right. But they also know that there's a market, right? They have a market for that, for, to, for that problem and the, and, and the solution. But here's the crazy part. The first two, right, problem and solution don't matter if you don't understand the market or if you don't have a market, right? So it's kind of interesting, you know, people go out, you know, entrepreneurs have an entrepreneurial seizure and they open up a business, right? Yeah. But they don't really do the research around it all. Well, right. Let me stop you right there. I got I to stop you right there because one of the things that I find absolutely amazing, okay, when I walk into a store or I'll talk to a, or I'll talk to a store owner, okay, I'll always ask him the demographic of the store, like what's the general population around your store? And a huge portion of the people that I speak to can't even answer like what the demographic 
a five mile circle, a 10 mile circle, a 20 mile circle around their store. So they, so when we go out there and we throw a marketing campaign out there, we don't know who the hell we're even marketing to. You know what I'm saying? We're just throwing stuff up against the wall and hoping that it sticks. And, and it, it's not, we're not, and that's what happens a lot of times. That goes back to what you were saying earlier. I think about the percentages of, you know, like only the conversion rate. And if you're mm -hmm. marketing into a demographic that's not right for you or an area that's right for you, your answer is going to be zero. So yeah. you, should, you have to know. And all of this stuff is provided by the Chamber of Commerce. You can pull all of this information from the Chamber of Commerce about your location, your store, the age gap, the average mean income. All of this information is readily available. So you could target the people that you want to go after. So yeah, I, I just want to add that though. Again, those are the those are the demographics of things, right? But you also what the more important part of it is the psycho demographics. Again, understanding what your customer is looking for, understanding the problem that they're trying to solve. Now, again, a scuba dive is not necessarily a problem, right? It's, it's a way that they, it's something that they're looking for, an adventure, uh, spending time with their family. So it's going to be on a, on a you know, it's not going to be about the, about the problem per se, but it's about understanding that they're looking to do something or they're seeking something. So you have to, you know, sometimes you have to say, okay, well, there's not necessarily a problem, but what is it that they're trying to do? Well, my, you know, my, my customers, again, in the scuba industry would be doing things like, you know, an adventure or, again, I think it's spending time with my family or, um, you know, I, I know it's high on your uh, list, Ange, you know, again, protecting the, you know, protecting the environment, yeah. you know, becoming, you know, understanding that the environment is important to us and how are you going to do it? So when you go make a dive, the dive's just not go down there and take some pictures. Your dive's go down there and say, hey, am I going to bring, bring a piece of debris back with me that, you know, shouldn't be on the ocean floor? Right. right. So understanding that kind of thing, which is the again, the psychographics of something um, is probably more important or just as important as what you just said a moment ago, the, the demographics of understanding where you're at. But see, but you, you're right. We have to do that. We have to understand, hey, you know, I want to be able to I want to be able to um, uh, know who's who's my market five miles away from my from my uh, my facility, 10 miles, 20 miles. Again, you know, most people, you know, aren't going to drive, you know, you got to get out of your store. Yeah, you got to get out of the store. Well, somebody yeah, made and, a comment there that I can't agree with anymore. It's a phenomenal comment about uh, market research is part of it, and that's great, but you got to get out there too. Mm -hmm, and I think mm -hmm. too many times people will be cool, in the man. office he in their cool store. Right there. He's out there every day. No, that was Steve. Was Steve. Deadpool he's, that. he's, you know, with him and Dive Master Vic and everything, they're out there doing it, man. While, you know, some <laughs> people are dreaming, other people. Right on. Yeah. It. Go to the local pools, go to the local. And again, even if you're in a, like I am right now, we're in a lockdown area. You can still get out there in other ways. Find a vehicle to get out there and engage with people, whether it be game nights, whether it be information sessions. We've been locally running a Monday night session for everybody and anybody who wants to tune in. And it's a one hour Zoom. We do a game one week. We do a, a dry skills or a fake wet skills. <laughs> Try teaching a fin kicking on Zoom. Very difficult. Uh, we're gonna do it. <laughs> but you be creative and engaging and traditionally people see me out there at the local pool all the time and oh you want to learn about diamond there that's the guy over there so i know the demographic but i'm also they go yeah it's that it's that old bald guy over there go see him he's the one who knows yeah. it right and yeah. getting out in the community whether it be physically or one of our upcoming sessions are going to be on social media getting out there on social media getting out there the correct way not just getting out there oh, i'm out there all the time yeah you go out you put your dive gear on get in the water that's not out there well, let me also say this to you, Bill. Again, if you guys are going to go out there and do some social networking, you know, everybody knows the elevator speech, right? Everybody's heard about the elevator speech. Yep. Well, that's what you've got to be able to do when you're networking. You've got to be able to say to them, hey, you know, I've got to interrupt them. I've got to engage them. I've got to educate them. I've got to give them an offer. You should be looking at all those kinds of things because social you know, networking is basically marketing, right? Type of networking. So, so you, you, if you do not have your uh, elevator pitch put together, then again, I challenge you to do that because you should be saying that elevator pitch every time you engage with somebody. I could give that to Bill, man. I think in the very first, one of the very first marketing committees that we did, you know, Bill went ahead and did a round table for like an hour and he put yeah. out an exercise of like, you know, get, get, getting together like an elevator pitch. And then he was kind of cool about putting it in a template 
that was mm -hmm. able to dictate an elevator pitch, like, if, you know, for, for the, for people who, you know, for the membership that, you know, if they want to engage or what's the elevator pitch, you know, I mean, and I think that's also goes to their own businesses, develop the elevator pitch for their own individual businesses. You know, what differentiates you, like when you're in a strip mall, you know, what's the elevator pitch from your store to the other 17 stores that are in that strip mall, you know, what separates yeah. you? And that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and again, I, I think it's great that, you know, you guys came up with that idea that says, hey, here's what a generic one will look like from now on, right? Here's a positioning that you guys are giving. I would just say to everybody, if you're going to use that, you've got to practice it. You've got to make it, you know, natural. You've got to make it yours. You know, I help small business owners all over the world build multi-million dollar businesses, right? And I do that by showing them powerful insights into uh, uh, building more profit and more revenue into their company. Would you like to know more about that? Yeah. Right. And, and that's what you've got to do. You've got to make it part of your own. And so again, you have to practice these things. Uh, this formula that I'm giving you, you have to use it. You know, and people, it's not natural for people to, you know, interrupt, engage, educate and offer, but I hope you go out and start looking at all the different advertising. That's what I was trying to do in that, in, in the uh, presentation there. So you can see, okay, well, yeah, the national campaigns, they, you know, do they really do it? They don't always do it. Right. And, and then the local, I showed you the local guy that I did, you know, back in Missouri, you know, he wasn't doing that. And this guy spent a lot of money. He spent money, or she, it was a woman. She spent money on, um, uh, on a telephone uh, uh, ads at that time, which were locked in. And then she was spending money uh, weekly or monthly uh, for a local paper. She spent a lot of money on marketing, but wasn't getting a return. So you, you've got to practice it over and over again. I'm going to give you guys a, a, a formula. I'm going I'm to put the formula out, but it's a grade sheet. So you can grade your own marketing. You can grade any marketing that you got going on. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's a scale. Right. And you, you have it. Right. Yeah. So but I'll make sure you have it if you don't if you don't have a co copy of it. With your, um, yeah, with your permission, can I put a link to it when we put our posting to members? Yeah, yeah, you can throw it up on your site. You can do do what you want with it. I, I, I'll, it's actually it already. Cool, it's actually a pretty cool tool because, like you know, you 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 design this marketing campaign, and then all of a sudden, but there's a checklist that you go down and you can grade it out to see how your marketing campaign equates. And if it's like you know, if it comes up with a sixty three percent, well, maybe we better think about re uh, putting this thing out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, well, it'll be above three percent. So if yeah. you, so it's a scale of one to five. You can add it up. But if you if you're over three you know, you'll make some money, but your objective is, you know, objective is to, to be hitting all the fives. You want to get to the five because then you know you're blowing it out the water. But if it's below a three, you instantaneously know, hey, wait, I'm missing something. I didn't have an interrupt or I didn't have an engage. I, I you know, I'm not educating as well as I can and I don't have an offer. And, and in my world, I see that a lot. I see that people have all the education because you guys know what's going on. You'll have all the education, but you won't have the interrupt or the engage and you won't have an offer or your offer is so simple. It's just call me. Right. Well, again, I, you know, 99% of most business or most people are looking for more information. They're not ready to buy. They're trying to find the way to get the best deal. Only 1% of us out there are now buyers ready to buy something right now. Right. So think about that. you got 1% that's saying, Hey, I'm ready to go. And you've got 99% that's saying, Hey, I need some more information before I make that decision. I want to make sure I'm making the best decision I possibly can. So, so again, I'm holding this in. Which pond do you want to fish in? Well, I see all the time, everybody wants to be in the 1%, right? <laughs> you got 99%. I'll let you guys go hang out in the 1% and I'll go fish in the 99% and I'll catch more fish. I promise you. All right. So, yeah, I get excited, Ange. I'm sorry, man. No, I, I, you're right. I'm over here punching and showing things, man. Yeah, no, no, you're, you're absolutely correct. I mean, you yeah. alluded to it in your previous talk mm -hmm. with us, and I've said it to people for years. A lot of time when you don't get the deal or the sign up or whatever you want to call it, the sale, it's not because yeah. somebody else got it. It's that nobody got it. Nobody followed mm -hmm. up. The person called around to get prices. Then they get off in the next hot spot or they get busy or kids or work or something, mm -hmm. and they don't actually – purchase it you didn't lose the sale nobody got yeah. the sale and yeah. by making that call to action in that and those are the like you said that 99 percent group that's the volume <laughs> of people they didn't buy anywhere yeah get them yeah. to actually commit by engaging them following up and using the other tools that we've used in some of our other talks and it sounds simple i know it's yeah 
No. It, well, it is, well, it, it is, is simple. Is. It is simple. But I, again, the toughest part is committing yourself to it and creating and, and creating um, the environment, creating the you know um, the environment in your company that says, "Hey, these are these things are important to us." So, so think about this for a second. You know, uh, I'm going to use this example. You know, the um, the lady with the the moving company. So uh, my question to her was, you know, well, how much money are you spending on marketing? So she tells me this crazy number. Oh, I'm, I'm spending $20,000 a month on marketing. I'm like, $20,000 a month of marketing. That's incredible. Great job. I said, so are you getting $80,000 a month in return? And she's like, well, how would I know that? I said, well, you track it. Are you tracking? So again, you have to, if you're going to spend this kind of money to build a business, then you have to make sure that you're tracking certain things. And does it take a little bit of energy? Absolutely. But you have to, you as the business owner have to create that culture that says these things are important for us to run a successful business. Now you can run a mom and pop shop that, you know, out of the back, you know, out of your garage or whatever and say, Hey, I'm just trying to make it, you know, just trying to live a lifestyle. That's perfectly fine. Right. Then you probably shouldn't be on this kind of call. You should probably, you know, be out there, you know, turning, you know, doing whatever you're doing in your garage. Right. But if you're going to be serious about building a business and you got to do these kinds of things, that are, that are going to allow you to build a business that works for you. Again, that's the big picture of those kinds of things. I think what you alluded to right there that you just need to circle back to is that you used the twenty thousand dollars and the eighty thousand dollars. But just so everybody in the just so everybody in the forum understands, what David said there was for every one dollar you spend on marketing, you should mm -hmm. bring four dollars back in revenue. So yeah. it's one to four. So every dollar. So if you're spending a hundred dollars a month on marketing, you need to get a four a four hundred dollar return. So that's yeah. how you quantify. That's how you measure. Is that if you're just throwing money out there, and it's not bringing back any revenue, then you're just spinning your wheels. But if you're going to go spend like in like the old days, the yellow page ad. If the yellow mm -hmm. page ad was five, six, seven thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars a year, that yellow yeah. page ad needed to generate forty thousand dollars worth of revenue. Correct, Dave. Uh Yep, absolutely. And again, these are just benchmarks I'm giving you, you know, four times the return. This is what I, you know, I've gathered and gained and seen in, in other industries are across the board business for small business. The tough part, again, for small business owners, you know, I always, it's an interesting kind of thing. You're throwing money out the door to drive in uh, prospects, but you're not measuring it. So, uh, you know, what, what, there's, there's Bill, there's Madison, and there's Ange that I can see on this, on this, call right now with me yeah there's about 50, if, there's about 50 other pan 50 other constituents okay listen you other uh, 46 people if you're just going to throw that money out the door could you please mail it to one of us four <laughs> i mean that's about what you're saying to me me i'm you know, freezing well, up here <laughs> exactly you might as well mail that money and because that's what you're doing you're just you know actually open the window up and just throwing a damn thing out the window right you've got to measure it. you got to be focused on it and again, it's strategic marketing that it's, you know, that's the toughest part. As I said to you in our last conversation, it's getting you to think strategically about your business is the hardest part. I've got it. You can, go ahead. I get, I get jacked up. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, I'm excited. I got a great question. Somebody asked me how they could do some measuring. How do you measure this, uh, this uh, return you, on that? How, how do you measure? How do you measure when you, what's, how do you quantify uh, the one to four? Okay. How do you measure quantify? Okay, so here's how you do it. And I'm gonna be very simple. The phone call comes in, correct? And someone's calling. Is that a prospect? The yeah. answer is yes. Now, how do you know if it's a prospect? You first of all say, you know, hi, I'm Joe Schmuckatelli from the best dot shop on planet Earth. Um, how may I help you today? Oh, I'm Angelo Fiore. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about diving. I want to learn about diving. You instantaneously know they don't know about diving. They've never been to your shop. They want to learn about diving. So you can either kick it on a piece of paper or what I'm trying to say to you guys right now, because all the businesses, all the small businesses have inv invested money into software to track things like this. They're just not using it. So I, I'm not sure. And I'm pretty sure that there's software for, for the scuba guys, right? Yeah, no, no, they're definitely, they, uh, there's definitely all kinds of programs out there. Yeah. Track leads and everything. Right. So, so use your dang system. Yeah. But you have to, you have to have, now listen to me, I just scripted, I mean, it's, it's kind of a generic script, but you got to have that, that phone conversation scripted out. So, so how am I going to measure that? Right. That's where I, where I was going with that. That guy calls in and as you get, oh, well, great. Yeah. And just think, you know, I, I'm excited about, uh, excited that you call us. I greatly appreciate that. I may I ask you a question. How did you hear about us? 
There's the number one question. Oh, I heard about you. I, I saw you on the website. Oh, great. Website tick on your little thing. Website tick, right? Or I saw you in the newspaper tick. Oh, I saw you as the old bald guy that my buddy told me at the swim pool. That's at the end of the swim pool and he told me to call you up. Boom. Yeah. Old bald guy at the end of the swim pool. Word of mouth. Right? <laughs> word of mouth. Yeah, word of mouth. So, so I would say to you that you have to start there. That's how you would track that. So you'd say, okay, well, oh, um, they got it off my website. My website cost me $1,000 a month, right? I only got one lead from that website. So question McCain, did you get four times your return? Right. No, because that one lead didn't turn into a customer. Then you'd measure the conversion and everything else that goes on that we talked about the other day about our, in our last conversation about the profit point of you know, um, lead generation, conversion rate, transactions, uh, pricing, and then, you know, profit form, uh, profit, uh, uh, yeah, profit. So um, you have to work those kinds of things. So what I want to do is say thank, I know David can hear me. So thank you very much, David. I appreciate once again, your guidance and advice. We'll make sure you get, we'll get your contact info up on our posting as well when Madison gets it up for us. And we will have everything up on Thursday in the newsletter. Um, remember, up above me, we've got the YouTube. There'll be links for that. This session will be posted there. There's so much. You couldn't have got it all at one shot, so we'll go through it a couple times. So uh, if you want to go through it seven times, it'll be on the Now YouTube. And please, while you're there, uh, make a point of um, subscribing to us so that we can get our numbers up and with some special features we can kick in once we get our numbers up there for our Now TV. Anyway, Angelo, any parting comment? No, man, I'm just thankful you guys came out and joined us today. Hopefully this, this information is, uh, we're always available, man. You know, you guys got our contact. If you guys have any questions, we can always direct them on. You guys, you got, we're assets that are available to you and we'll keep bringing you these talks and everything and hopefully, uh, you know, see you on the next go around. Keep it grinding and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Thank you very much and have a great day, everybody. Bye now.